Now, may I uh, invite our fraternal delegate, uh, is uh, Chris Monsignor Hector Miguel. Uh, is Miguel is uh, not, not talking about uh, Filipino beer, no? Miguel, Miguel. Miguel uh, Gabriel uh, Vidal de OFM, the Archbishop of uh, Trujillo and President of the Conference of Episcopal Baruana, and also the uh, President of uh, Salem. Dear Monsignor, welcome to us. <laughs> Dear Cardinals, Archbishops, Bishops, brothers and sisters, I want to tell you how grateful I am for being here. Thanks especially to Cardinal Gracious and Cardinal Bo, as they invited me to this great assembly. I want to share with you a 20 minutes video about Selam. I hope it will be useful to you. The video, please. Council of Latin America and the Caribbean, CELAN, in communion with the Universal Church. I deeply appreciate the fraternal gesture for inviting CELAN to be present on this occasion to discuss the present and future of the Pilgrim Church in Asia. With great simplicity, I come to share the experiences of our performance in Latin America and the Caribbean. It is a pilgrimage that gathers a long history, which goes back even to colonial times with the celebration of synods and councils. In the middle of the last century, the fragmentation of the ecclesial work in Latin America and the Caribbean the witness of communications and the need to share pastoral work in the region began to be observed. Given these bishops, Heather Camara, Brazil, and Manuela Raí, Chile, enthusiastically fostered the idea of promoting episcopal and ecclesial coordination and support. This is how CELAN emerged in 1955. CELAN was founded in the heat of the challenges and chains of the church during that period. In light of the sense of time and 10 years before the completion of the Second Vatican Council, that marked the church and is still in full force. And while the Second Vatican Council was taking place, several bishops from Latin America, along with the other bishops and theologians of the time, promoted the Church of the Poor concept affirmed by St. John XXIII. The creation of Ceylon was motivated by the need to respond to times that required a prophetic voice of the church around the continent. Facing the social, cultural, and paradigmatic changes of a time that required greater communication and reflection by pastors in such changing contexts. At the Ceylon creation base were always the principles of communion, collegiality, and ecclesiality. The synodal perspective was there from the beginning since it was the only way to get together and interpret the new realities and look for new answers. For this reason, 
the general conferences of the Episcopates of Latin America and the Caribbean had immense importance for the pastors and for the entire church pilgrims in the region. Their arguments and conclusions have been references for the evangelizing work. The first ones held in 1955 in Rio de Janeiro and from where Celan was founded, sought for pastors to reflect together on critical situations on the continent and responses from faith see the need to give life to a service organism to the Episcopal Conferences of the continent regarding this task of communication, reflection, and pastoral guidelines for action. This is how CELAN was created. But from time to time, the need arose to hold general conferences with the bishops of the region, so that together they could update analyses and reflections in the light of faith, as well as continue to identify pastoral lines and strengthen formation. In this regard, the Theological Institute for Latin America, ITEPAL, was created which is now the Biblical Theological Pastoral Center, Sevitepal, by bringing together in a single organization the three schools that confirmed it. The Biblical, the Theological, and the Social Ministry. The Medellin Conference of 1968 was a magnificent event for hosting the Second Vatican Council and the prospect for its creative application in the region, evidencing the necessary preferential option for the poor. Human promotion was emphasized as a consubstantial element of any evangelization process and growth in faith. In 1979 was held the General Conference of Puebla, which followed Medellin, and reaffirms the preferential option for the poor, and elaborates important proposals for uncomprehensive evangelization. In the Conference of Santo Domingo in 1992, 500 years after evangelization began in the continent, an important reflection is made on inculturation and these great challenges for the new evangelization. In 2007, the Aparecida Conference was held, and these conclusions are still being assimilated and we are making efforts to put into practice. It raises in the face of the change of epoch that it detects the great challenges of the continental mission, but not as a conventional mission, but as a permanent state of missions, seeking that peoples have life and live in abundance with the missionaries' disciples' work. The contents of Medellin and Puebla are taken up, particularly from the inaugural speech of Pope Benedict XVI, who pointed out that the option for the poor is contained in the Christological faith. We still have an outstanding debt with Aparecida that was discussed in the first Ecclesian Assembly in November 2021 in Mexico. Selang in light of the signs, of the sense of time and the challenges for the Church, as Ecclesia Semper Reformanda, 
has been restructuring at various times to better serve the people of God and pilgrims in the region through the Episcopalian conferences. Thus, at the 37th General Assembly of Sela, it was agreed to open a renewal and restructuring process with organizationally meet forming four pastoral centers based on C. Jan's Act. In C, the Knowledge Management Center, CGC. In Jan's, the Biblical Theological Pastoral Center, Sevite Palo. And in Act, the Networks and Pastoral Action Center, SEPRAP. Likewise, and as a transversal center, the communication center, CPC, by the key word and concept is articulation. Because it's not about that each center goes by itself, but rather that it performs pastoral action in articulation and synodality. The perspective and prospective of the General Conference of Aparecida is challenges, and the Pope's request regarding the pending issues of the Conference of Aparecida gave rise to the realization of the first Ecclesian Assembly that is unprecedented in Latin America and the Caribbean, also the first at the Universal Church level. The assembly meeting was held in Mexico between November 21st and 28th, 2021, under the protection of Our Lady of Guadalupe, was preceded by a prior consultation or listening to all the people of God, bishops, priests, religious, laymen, and women, and peripheries representatives. Pope Francis emphasizes as a crucial point on his pontificate, rescuing the role of laymen and women within the church, working together with the bishops and all the clergy and religious life, seeking social, economic, political, and religious conditions that allow the fulfillment of the life on this world which is also the kingdom of God. 70,000 people participate in the listening process and 1,030 attended the event, of which 900 were virtual and 130 in person. We were enriched by the illuminating participation of Cardinal Bo and Cardinal Gracias, among other illustrious prelates who, with their presence, reflections, and message, gave us especially important contributions. Currently, we are in the final edition of the conclusive document that we have called Towers of a Synodal Church that goes out to the peripheries reflections and pastoral proposals from the first Ecclesial Assembly of Latin America and the Caribbean, and will also have a popular version. The document gathers the background, challenges, and pastoral proposals of the Ecclesial Assembly. In the same perspective of the Ecclesial Assembly, CELAN has been promoting the continental process of synods on synodality, interacting with the 22 Episcopal conferences that have already prepared their respective conclusive documents, seeing the perspective of communion, participation, admission is the same and that the Ecclesial Assembly was marked. Thus, Selah has formed two large working commissions at the continental level. One of the appropriation of the document content 
of the first ecclesial assembly and the order to monitor the process of the continental synod on the path to the universal synod. Both continental commissions are articulated from the presidency of Ceylon. We can also say that Ceylon seeks to reflect its new structures in the new statutes that are about to be approved by the Holy See and that express the restructuring and renewal of Ceylon in all its instances. The Ceylon headquarters itself as a physical meeting place has a special importance in the service to the church and pilgrims of the continent. And on July 12 of this year, the new headquarters in Bogota was inaugurated, whose realization has been the product of a great effort and will allow to host in its different environments the religious pastoral agents who wish to perform their meetings, conferences, retreats, since it is a large place with adequate spaces and services. In my opinion, I simply want to express what the Latin America and Caribbean Church has done in trying to be faithful to the conciliar teachings and even more to the experience of the first Christians and the path towards synodically. We have no doubt that the ecclesiology of the people of God is not opposed, but needs episcopal collegiality. But in the same way, we are truly clear that they all feel part of the church and work towards synodactyl. And in this regard, we will be able to have a greater evangelizing capacity. In essence, Ceylon's contribution to the church in Latin America and the Caribbean is manifested in the following. Seeking to be faithful to his prophetic vocation in response to the voices of the Latin American and the Caribbean peoples. And that is expressed in the preferential option for the poor that has identified the evangelizing mission of the church in this continent. Its original reception of the Second Vatican Council through the general conferences of the Latin American Episcopate, and more recently through the First Ecclesiastical Assembly of Latin America and the Caribbean. Its uh, permanent support for the reflection and pastoral action of the Church in Latin America, in communion with the Bishop of Rome, with a fraternal and collegial sense at the service of the Episcopal Conferences. Uh, its offer of training spaces with a Latin American perspective to various ecclesial and social actors of the Church in Latin America and the Caribbean. It's where articulating networks for pastoral action at the continental and transcontinental level responding to the challenges of migration, human trafficking, care for our common home, defense of human rights, children, youth, and vulnerable women, indigenous peoples and Afro-descendants, Catholic education, among others, promoting in this process the configuration of the ecclesial networks, such as the Panamazonian Ecclesial Network, REMAP, REPAM, the Mesoamerican Ecclesial Network, REMAM, the Ecclesial Network of the Guarani Aquifer and the Gran Chaco, the Latin American and Caribbean Ecclesial Network for Migration, 
displacement, refuge and human trafficking, clamor, the centrality of children project and the ecclesial conference of the Amazon, SEAMA. The preparation and dissemination of studies and research realities to problems of the Latin America and Caribbean reality, which allow not only to have a well-founded diagnosis, but also vital action prospects for the church in light of the social doctrine. The promotion of communication, meetings and socialization of pastoral action, experiences between the different Episcopal conferences and ecclesial networks in Latin America and the Caribbean, in communion both with the Holy See, providing spaces and communication means to favor participation, in listening, work, in synodality, both religious and lady. The testimony of a synodal church that goes out to the peripheries is possible, disciples and missionary, mystical and prophetic, enthusiastic about caring for our common home. The offer of subsidies, publications, and multimedia content to promote the Pope's Magisterium and the Latin American Magisterium contributing to the formation and updating of bishops, priests, seminarians, religious men and women, lay men and women. The effort to be assigned and referred to the church collegiality in Latin America and its Catholicity in tune with the pastoral guidelines of the Pope's Magisterium. I would like to end this brief reflection by informing you that the Holy Father has entrusted to Ceylon the analysis, selection, and monitoring of the projects that will be financed by the Fondo Popularum Progressive. Dear brothers, I invite you to renew your passion for Jesus, for his gospel, and his people. May the Lord bless you and the Blessed Virgin fill you with tenderness. Pass at one. www.celan.org Thank you. Thank you. Uh, only one minute, uh, we can listen. Uh, there is still an additional statement that was missing in the video. In recent years, Salam has had numerous opportunities for collaboration and mutual learning with the Asian region, especially with regard to the territorial ecclesial network for the care of our common home with the accompaniment of the Dicastery for Integral Human Development. The experience of the Amazon region has served as a model of networking to seek the new synodal path for the church and for the integral ecology and in which we have articulated with you, with your important river above the ocean ecclesial network, Raoen. This universal synod is an ideal occasion to continue waving south-south uh, network in order to respond to the cause of Laudato Si and Fratelli Tutti. Thank you very much. Yeah, Chris, thank you very much uh, for the beginning, the origin, the history, and the continuous work of, uh, of Selam that has a deep uh, inspiration uh, for all of us. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias.